Hello, Legacy Sabers. Marsh here. So today we're going to take a look at um, logarithms. Now you're probably saying, why do we need to learn these things? Well, let's review some stuff that we've already done. So we've solved exponential equations with a common base, right? So something like, well, the 9 could be 3 squared. And then we were like, well, let me just distribute the 2 in. And then oh, I have the same base, right? And you can set x equal to 2x plus 10. That's not abnormal. But what if I look at this problem and I, I, I can't make a common base. I know 8 is 2 cubed, but 10 is not 2 to a power to what I'm known for. If I look at my card, my perfect roots chart, 10 doesn't show up anywhere on there, right? So I need the ability to solve a problem that looks like this, which makes us need dun, 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 logarithms. So today, you are going to want to find a calculator. It needs to be a scientific or a graphing one. I would not use that phone calculator because who bought a phone for a calculator anyway? And you're also going to want the foldable I gave you on the logarithms. Now, logarithms are just a new type of notation to help us solve for x. No, I am not talking about the actual kind of log that you are thinking of. So logarithms, all they are is just a special way to ask a very specific question. And that very specific question is what exponent is required to go from a base of B to reach a value of A. Now, you're going to see this very commonly written in this form. Log base B of A is X. That is how you are going to say that information. Because sometimes in the math world, it's how do I say the notation? So ultimately, logs answer the question, what exponent is required to go from a base of B to reach a value of A? So base of B to reach a value of A. What is the exponent on this? So ultimately, this is just another way of converting between two different forms. Exponential form, you guys know it as base to the exponent equals value. That would be like 2 to the third equals 8. Okay? Logarithmic form is going to kind of flip everything around. It's going to make the exponent the answer. So that's going to look like log base of the value equals the exponent. In this case, it's going to look like this. Log base 2, because that was the base over here, right? Value, so I'd be an 8, is going to be equal to 3. Okay, now why is this useful? Well, ultimately, sometimes you want to get to an exponent and you can't convert. So this is going to allow us to get to those exponents and be able to edit them and use them to find the answers of that information. Now, we need to get really good, though, about converting between exponential form and logarithmic form. So we need to be really good at doing that. But first, we need to be able to calculate some logarithms. First thing is we need a change of base formula because sometimes these are not perfect numbers. So if I have log base of A, that is the same because here's the thing. If you look on your calculator, do you see a log button? Here's the problem. Your log button on your calculator doesn't have different bases. So we need to be able to use other forms. So I'm going to use log of a, it's called the change of base formula, so log of a over log of b, okay? So when you want to actually get a number for a value, you're going to go log of a divided by log of b. Let's play that on here. So log of 4, log base 4 of 64. So in this case, in my calculator, I would type log of 64 over log of 4. What are you guys getting? We are going to get 3, right? Now, you're probably thinking, well, Marsh, isn't there an easier way? There is. I could technically say this is equal to x, right? And then if I convert it to exponential form, it'd be base to the x equals 64. So 4 to the x equals 64. Well, on your gold card, your card, your perfect roots chart, you get 4 cubed is 64. That's how we're getting it. So let's keep looking here. Let's not use the change of base formula. Let's do a different form. Um, I'm going to go, well, 4 
to the x, because that's the answer, right? The exponent is the answer in the exponential form, equals 16. What? 4 to what power is 16? Um, 2, right? So my answer would be 2. If you use the change of base formula, you would also get 2. Um, let's do this one. 5 to the x is 125. That would be, well, 3, right? So that value is 3. Log base 5 of 125 is, in fact, 3. Um, 6 to some power is 216. Uh, that would be 6 to the third. So x would be 3. Oh. I don't know if I know this one off the top of my head. So I'm going to actually use the change of base formula, I think, for this gun, because this one's kind of confusing. So I'm going to go log of 1 over 243 divided by log of 3. What am I going to get? Log of 1 over 243 um, um, divided by log of 3. I get negative 5. Does that make sense? 3 to the negative fifth is 1 over 243. Well, that would make sense, right? Because the negative 5 would make it turn into 1 third, and then that would be 1, 3 to the fifth. 3 to the fifth is 243. Should have paid attention to that. But nevertheless, change of base formula is a really good thing to practice. And then we got this one. Uh, 2 to what power will give me 4? Well, <laughs> That's definitely two, right? So this ability to identify and calculate a logarithm, it's kind of like the ability to calculate exponentials. It's just the flip of it, honestly. Now, how do you convert between exponential and logarithmic form? Same kind of thing as we were just doing there. I need to convert. Now, ultimately, when you are in exponential form, you're kind of following a weird term. It's kind of like a G is kind of how you're doing it. Um, some students like it, some people don't. It's just easier to memorize. But ultimately, you do one of these terms. So you start at the base. So log of 1 fifth, that's the base, log base 1 fifth of y is going to be equal to the x. Okay. Let's try another one. So I'm going to start at the 9, go to the x, go to the y. So log base 9 of x is y. Now, I always put the guy inside of the log in parentheses. Technically, you don't have to if there's only one guy in there. However, I think it makes it cleaner. It lets me know what's inside the log and what's not inside the log. So I always put parentheses around my guy in there. You might not see that on every single worksheet. Um, log base 6 of x is equal to y. So notice what I'm just doing. Starting at the 6, go to the x, go to the y, go down, that kind of thing. Um, converting to exponential from logarithmic form. Now, how do I know it's in logarithmic form? It has a log in it. Okay, you're almost going to do an e. It's going to go like wee, wee, okay? u to the v is that. So u to the v is 15 sixteenths. Because remember, the answer to a log problem is the exponent of the exponential equation. So this over here is always going to be the exponent. So 7 fourths to the y is going to be equal to x. And then u to the negative 16th is equal to v. Not terrible, right? It's just a kind of a quick little idea of how to convert between two forms. It takes a little bit, but not terrible. Now, what about evaluating log of 100? Well, there's no base. How do I know what the base is, Marsh? I can't, I, can't, I don't know what it is. Well, here's what this thing is. This is actually a straight calculator. If you type log of 100 on your calculator, you will get 2. Here's how this is working. There is no base present in a log expression. We're going to assume it's log base 10. Log base 10 is referred to as a common log because here's the thing, guys. Your calculator can't do every single log base. It doesn't know how. That would be too many buttons because you could have log base 2 of 2.39. So we need the ability to have the ability to do the common logs only and just kind of edit things in our 
in our equations with the change of base formula. So I got log of 100, we would get this technically log base 10 of 100. And in fact, 10 to the second is in fact 100. So this is my answer of 2. So if you do not have a base and a log, just assume it's 10 and move on. Most, most textbooks will not put 10 just because it's a common log. Now, two different types of exponential equations. We have solved this one. This is old news right here, okay? You guys have done this. Now, the things that you have not done is when you have exponents on only one side. This is where those logarithms that we just worked with are going to come into play. So, here is how you're going to solve those particular problems. You're going to isolate the base and use inverse operations to change into log form. So I'm going to add 1 because I'm going to get the base alone. So 2 to the x is 7. Now, you're probably thinking, Marsh, what if that would have been an 8? You're right, x would have been 3. But, unfortunately, that's not that's a different show. So we're going to have to convert to logarithmic form. I'm stuck in exponential, can't do anything else. i got to go to logarithmic. So I'm going to go log base, remember the base is the base, log base 2 of 7 is equal to x. Now I need to know what that value is. So log base 2 of 7. Again, we're going to use our change of base formula. Now log base 2 of 7 is log 7 divided by log 2. Now some of you, especially you Casio users, may have a base log button. Good for you. Some of you who are TI graphing calculators, there is a secret spot to find it. If you find it, you can use it. If you ask me, I will help you. But that's just between you and me, all right? That that exists. Let's figure out what log base 7 divided by log base 2 is. That is approximately, I'm going to round to about five, four decimal places. X is 2.8. 074 is what I'm getting for that problem. Now, here's what's cool about these exponential functions. There is no such thing as extraneous solutions because I can plug anything inside of X. Now, remember, because an exponential function, when we were graphing them, their domain was negative infinity to infinity. That's why there is no extraneous solutions possible on this particular kinds of functions or equations because the domain is all reals. Everything works. Let's try another one. This is like the super meaty beefcake kind. So we have a lot of stuff to get rid of. But remember, we just want the parenthesis guy. We want him alone. Self-confinement. So I'm going to add five. Now be careful. Don't take care of that one half first. Some of you like to do that. But you're going to do PEMDAS opposites. You're going to do add and subtract first when you start solving. So I'm going to go 1 half, 10 to the 2x plus 3 is equal to 19. i got to get rid of that half. I don't want to divide by half. That's confusing. Fractions and fractions, who wants that? I'm going to multiply by 2 because that's the same thing as dividing by a half. It's the same as multiplying by the reciprocal. So those guys are gone. I get 10 to the 2x plus 3 is equal to 38, I believe that is. Marsh's mind doesn't want to work today. 38, yes. Now. Can't to the life of me do any more, right? We got to get to this x. It's in the exponents. Can't do that. So I'm going to go to a logarithm. So I'm going to, ooh, I'm running out of room. Let's go over here. Log base 10, right, of 38 is equal to 2x plus 3. Now, this doesn't need the change of base formula because it's a log base of 10. So I could just literally, in my calculator, type log of 38. I, if you did the change of base formula, you'll just get log of 38 over log of 10. Log of 10, log base 10 of 10 is just 1, so you're technically dividing by 1. Um, but this in the calculator is 1.5798. Okay, that's equal to 2x plus 3. Oop, I'm running out of room. Yeah, there's a 3 over there. He's just hiding. Now, solving that, I'm going to subtract the hiding 3. Ooh, minus 3. And I'm just letting my calculator hold on to all the numbers. I didn't clear it. I just did the, just subtract 3 right away. And I get negative 1.4202 is equal to 2x divided by 2 to get all the way solved. That way I don't lose any 
change. Negative 0 0.71, 0 and 1. Current answer. Now, what you could do if you're like, Marsh, what if I got the wrong answer? You could plug it back in for the x. You would get the same answer. Now, I'm going to warn you, you're probably not going to get 14. You might get 13.9999999 because you're rounding. And rounding does cause a little bit of inequality to happen. Or you could get 14.000000. Uh, Okay, so keep in mind that if you do plug in to check your work, you may not get the same answer as on the right-hand side of the equal sign. If that happens, that's okay, though, because it's round error. That's all it is. That's it for today. Looking at logs. So they are very special. They do show up quite a bit in the real-life world because a lot of times we, we want to solve for that ex exponent, and we don't have the ability. So... This is the end of the video. I will see you later, savers.